This podcast will not be talking about the movie so much as it will be talking about the amazing book, First Blood, which I have recently read. And to be honest, I was more than blown away by it. And it's a quick read or listen if you like the audiobook as much as me. Uh, I, I listen to audiobooks all the time simply because it's it's easier for me to listen to something than to read it, and I can get through it faster that way while still comprehending the story and everything like it is. And that being said, it is also a very quick read. It's a short book, and I highly recommend it. But something many of you might have noticed with me is that I like shades of gray. What does this mean? This means nothing is good and nothing is bad. Things kind of fall in the middle. I've fallen into that trap making things far too black and white before in my works. Look at which way they walk. Oh my god, that is such a piece of shit. And only now, having grown and learned, do I see that often when something is black and white, you lose a lot of dramatic potential. When talking about the movie First Blood, as much as I enjoy that film, this is certainly the case. Rambo in the film is our hero, no ifs, ands, or buts, and you cannot dispute it. He doesn't kill anyone. The one person he does is arguably an accident. He is brutalized by the police, and our sheriff, Teasel, is a complete jerk for the sake of being a jerk, and nothing else. And to be honest, that is sort of the downfall of the film, in my opinion. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I still highly enjoy the film, and actually still call it a good film. But after reading the book, I'm, I, I just was blown away by how much dramatic potential was missed by the film. So then comes the book, and uh, oh boy, is this element gone. And I mean gone. Rambo is a murdering asshole. Teasel is a flawed, arrogant man. Uh, captain Troutman, he's a captain in the book, but forgive me if I keep calling him Colonel, is an unemotional robot with as much with a much smaller impact on the overall story. You see a kind of a pattern with that with our three people. Uh, no one is basically overly good, yet despite what I just said, none are overly bad either. The author blatantly made it clear he wanted to bring Vietnam home, literally. And it sort of helps with a little bit of historical context in mind. When he wrote the book in 1972, or at least that was when it was published, we were still in the heat of the Vietnam War. While when the movie was made, we had all come home, and that was like a decade later. What the author wanted to do was really showcase death. Lots of death. And thus he made Rambo a natural-born killer, slaughtering anyone in his way, even if they are not directly causing him harm. In fact, because the book alternates evenly between the point of view of Rambo and Teasel, we learn a lot about these deputies and even the tracker who owns the scent dogs. We, we learn to like their quirks, and Rambo just brutally murders them. This is almost a reversal in the film. So why does the book take place? What brought about this change? Is, is there a protagonist? Is there an antagonist? If everyone is gray, who do we root for? This brings me to my point, and that is that First Blood, the book, is basically what happens when two stubborn men butt heads. Teasel is the establishment, and the author has said as such. He is the old guard of warriors who fought in the days of World War II in Korea. He specifically was a war hero from Korea. Rambo is the new guard of warrior, those who trained for the rigors of Vietnam, a war unlike any other. Historical context is important to understand this. This is just after the 1960s, where America sees a generational divide unlike any other. Parents and children are light years apart, and they don't seem to understand each other. It brings birth to the American counterculture movement, violent films like Bonnie and Clyde, The Wild Bunch, Dillinger, things like this, where the underdog tends to be lionized against the man. Roger Corman's The Wild Angels, The Trip, you name it. People are also turning on the TVs and seeing all these violent images from Vietnam. The atrocities committed on both sides of the conflict is mixed with light-hearted, happy tunes for music and commercials and so on and so forth. You listen to a lot of songs from the 60s and 70s, and most have an upbeat tonality to them. So there is a natural divide between people 
between classes, between races, between literal cultural trends, movies, literature, everything in American society. So in comes David Morrell, the author of First Blood, a man who has not seen war or any of the violence depicted in his book, yet he creates something so horrifically simple and realistic. Rambo is a man trained to kill. He had a horrible upbringing, dropped out of school, joined the Green Berets to escape, and became a killing machine. When he returns to the U.S., we simply dropped him off, gave him the Medal of Honor, and let him go, not understanding the ideas of PTSD and such. And anyone I hear complaining that our soldiers today are pussies compared to those back then, I want to slap. The only reason we see more cases of PTSD today is because we know what it is. We know what to look for. There's just as many then as there are now, and it pains me to say that. On top of us abandoning Rambo, Vietnam War veterans were not treated well by us. We threw eggs at them, called them baby killers. Instead of hailing them as brave men, we insulted them and turned our backs on them. Rambo in the novel is turned off by this, and thus wanders the country, living off the land, not shaving, not getting any haircuts. And this is where he comes across the Kentuckian town the novel takes place in. In the book, Rambo is a stubborn man who, despite being the more sympathetic of our two protagonists, is arrogant in his own right. Instead of telling people who he is, why he's doing what he's doing, he just remains silent, even taunting some of the policemen asking questions. If he had just talked to some of these people, in particular Teasel, most of the story never would have happened. Yet Teasel isn't innocent either. He too is a bit arrogant, but on the other end of the spectrum. He believes in his small-town police force so much that he forgets their limitations, chasing after Rambo and getting most of them killed. Not wounded like in the film, but killed. And this is completely Teasel's fault. And he loses everything in the process, including his own life. He is losing his wife because he wants a son, but she doesn't, which fuels his anger towards Rambo. While Rambo is at fault for not talking, Teasel is at fault for not listening. Instead of seeing that something is clearly wrong with Rambo, Teasel just pictures what he wants, which is a hooligan up to no good, which makes Rambo want to spite Teasel. Teasel loses his own father figure, who gets shot and all of his dogs shot in the process, his police friends, who he all knows and is even trained, he's seen these men from their grunt days to where they are now, and one by one he watches as they are all slaughtered. This only makes Teasel more stubborn and wanting to bring Rambo down, while for Rambo, all these people coming after him by order of Teasel only makes him want to punish and take Teasel down more, both stubborn and and so bent on their hatred for each other. Instead of being dropped off at the edge of town and then picked up immediately, Rambo is warned to leave town three times by Teasel, at three separate occasions. It is explained uh, this has happened to Rambo before, and he has had enough of being pushed around, while Teasel has had enough with people in general, and is looking for a way to vent. And neither of these two characters give up when they clearly could. For Rambo, he could have surrendered in the Batcave, but instead knows he's cornered and decides to blow up the town. Even when he is dying, which both men just get riddled with bullets over the course of the story, Rambo wants to die fighting, shooting at Teasel right up until the end. For Teasel, it is the idea that this boy, he never calls him Rambo, is his problem and his target. Teasel is suffering from a heart condition and pushes himself to the brink, and then even and then even after getting shot in the gut and bleeding out, he sees it as his final mission to at least be there to see Rambo killed. There is no sparing anyone in this book, be it from Teasel's point of view or Rambo's. It's how they go about it that's different. Rambo is the cold-blooded killer, and he often pushes his own emotions away 
to think of what to do next and how to survive longer. The best example I can think of is when he's chased off a cliff and decides on who to shoot first, and he makes a decision to kill all the dogs because they can track him. And it's unnerving how cold and calculated Rambo is when he comes to the decision, compared to how emotional and horrific the description of the killing is from Teasel's point of view. Yet this isn't the case always. As the book continues, it is Rambo who grows angrier and angrier and thus more emotional. He even has a small mental breakdown when he kills an owl to eat it. It's a great scene here, and he, t and he takes some solace in just petting the soft feathers of the bird before he cuts it up and eats it. Rambo even begins to enjoy the thrill of killing policemen, if reminding him of his days in Vietnam where Rambo had a purpose in life. Teasel, on the other hand, is an extremely emotional and angry man, making his decisions to chase after the escaped Rambo out of his anger instead of sitting back and thinking about it logically. This anger only grows from the beginning, telling Rambo to go away the first time. To be honest, Teasel's pretty friendly to Rambo, then being firm the second time, and then finally placing Rambo under arrest for the third time. Yet by the end of the book, Teasel becomes the more logical, thinking man, who begins to not only understand Rambo's mentality, but also begins to successfully predict Rambo's movements even better than Colonel Troutman. Uh, Captain Troutman, Jesus Christ. I'm so used to the movie, I apologize. Both men are stubborn in their ways, one of war and chaos, the other of law and order. Morell described the book and movie as two freight trains that look similar but are going in different directions. I can apply this almost to the book itself with Teasel and Rambo, them both being freight trains heading straight for each other and then colliding in a giant explosion. And it's like these two people are so different, they loop around and become the same person. And the result is there being no winner. There is no victory here. No one coming out on top. No one being the clear right and the clear wrong. It's like the war in Vietnam came directly to America. And that's exactly what Morel wanted to tell with this book. And in the end, there is nothing left but a bunch of devastation and dead bodies. And that's David Morell's First Blood. What an outstanding book. I'm so glad that I read it. In the end, this is Adam Noyce of Vane Productions saying, Sayonara. <laughs>